Let's take a deep dive in how I managed to turn this old boring TV unit into a standout statement piece. Check it out. We're going to break it down and work out the steps that you need to take. Don't already know me? I'm Jade and I love to refinish furniture. Welcome to my channel. Let's check out how I refinish this TV unit. We'll have a look at it before. I could see that it had a beautiful timber grain on the top and I wanted to keep that exposed. The timber was actually in amazing condition. So the first thing I did was get my belt sander out. I needed to use the belt sander to strip off all that original varnish off the top of the piece. Because of how beautiful the timber was, I wanted to leave the top raw and exposed. The orange color was actually only the previous stain. I'm able to strip the stain off to remove the pine timber underneath, which is actually a much lighter color. I used a belt sander to do this. Really, I only used the belt sander to rip the top layer off and then I swapped to my orbital sander. But when you're using a belt sander, make sure you keep the belt flat. You could also rip the top off with a carbide scraper or with a chemical paint stripper, really up to you what you choose. I then grabbed out an orbital sander and I used the orbital to take the next layer off using a 120 grit. I do it this way because I find the orbital easier to maneuver and it just gives a nice overall finish, I find. I swap sanders again cause I'm a bit fickle like that, but if you don't have the option to keep swapping sanders, you can just do this next bit by hand. I started out with my battery operated orbital because it's really light and easy to maneuver into those grooves so that I can sand out right up into those cracks. I'll also demonstrate to you using a credit card in a piece of hand sandpaper how this can also be done by hand. If you don't have access to sanders, you can sit here and hand sand in those grooves as well. And because I like to have the top of my pieces where I have any raw exposed timber as smooth as butter, I went over the entire piece again with the 240 grit. This could also be done with a 400 grit or even something a little bit higher. It's really a personal preference. I just like to have a nice smooth flat surface when I finish my raw exposed timber. Whenever I'm refinishing a piece, I like to try and tie it all in together. Sometimes I like to have the raw exposed feet, but in this instance, I came up with the idea that I wanted to have a part of the drawers and also the timber doors as also raw exposed timber to match into the timber top. I took the doors off, removing the hinges here, and then I also took the drawers out. So that then I could easily sand some of those flat surfaces to get back to raw timber. I also removed the original handles and pulls because I knew that I wanted to replace them and add new hardware onto the piece once I was finished. Got me safety gear back on again, mask, safety glasses, and also earmuffs because I'm going to get sanding again. Here is where I brought my idea to fruition. You'll see that I've got my battery operated orbital sander out and I am sanding the original varnish off the outside of the doors and I also do the same thing on the drawers. What I'm actually doing here is creating more or less a picture frame look. I have sanded the outsides and I'm going to paint the inside which is then going to give me a real frame effect that matches in with the timber on the top of the piece. I finished the two doors and then I did the same on all six of the drawers, sanding the front face of the drawer and then also all around the outside to create that real picture frame look. I did it with an 80 grit and then went over it with a 120 grit to get that nice smooth surface. Woohoo, I finished my sanding. Now it's time to do some cleaning. I grabbed out my trusty degreaser. Here I'm just using tricleanium like I always do. If you're a regular on my channel watching my videos, just mix the crystal in with water, dissolve it all up so that it is good to go. And then you're going to do a nice deep clean of your piece. You also do this the exact same way before you start sanding to make sure you don't have any grime on your piece that you're just going to push into the piece. Once your water is good to go and your degrees is mixed in, just get a sponge and then clean the entire piece. When you have little grooves like this door does here, you need to be careful and make sure that you are getting right into those little grooves and all those little nooks and crannies so that you are making sure that there's no dust that's going to stop your paint from sticking once you get painting. 
doing this over the entire piece, making sure you're not leaving any large amounts of water anywhere because as we know with timber, we don't wanna let water soak into the timber. I'm just going to continue using the degreaser to wipe down the entire piece. I absolutely love refinishing furniture. Don't get me wrong, it's been my full-time job for a couple of years now, but the cleaning does get quite a little bit tedious. I know what it feels like. So I know if you're sitting here going, my gosh, I hate doing so much cleaning. Why do I have to clean so much? It's just a real requirement to be able to get the best end result for your piece. I'm also always constantly surprised by how many animals, spiders, all kinds of things are living in furniture when you actually start to take it all apart. So be wary when you are cleaning and going through all of the furniture. You're going to give it a vacuum most likely first, but when you are dealing with furniture, it is possible that there's going to be spiders and I have been bitten on many occasions. So just be wary. Yay, the cleaning's finally done and I get onto the fun part, painting. Now, when I'm painting, I often like to use the reusable shopping bags to create a bit of a tray for my roller. This way it is much easier to clean up and I can easily just flip the bag over to the other side when I need to swap from my primer to my paint as well. And it just saves me time when I'm doing my cleanup. So I've got the plastic bag, I've got the tray, I'm gonna put some of my primer into the tray here and then I'm going to use my paintbrush and roller to apply the primer onto my piece. Here I'm going to paint the picture frame like I usually do. I'm going to paint the outside first with the paintbrush and then I'm going to roll the middle section to get that nice smooth finish. I personally love using a mini roller. It just makes the job so quick and easy. You're just going to get a microfiber roller and a roller arm and then use the roller to apply your primer and paint onto your piece. Go ahead and do it. It's gonna save you so much time and hassle and you'll be thanking me later. I moved around to the front of the piece and I decided in order to get a nice clean line here because I was leaving the inside of the cabinet original and not painting or staining the inside of the cabinet, I wanted to apply a masking tape along this bottom line here so that I could create a really nice smooth line. Once I'd finished applying the masking tape, I just went with my paintbrush and painted right up to that masking tape leaving just a tiny little edge where I'm going to put my paint or my actual paint color so that the primer doesn't seep through underneath. I also went along with my finger after I painted this side ledge and just wiped off any excess that there may have been that got onto the section that I wanted to leave as original timber. I did the same thing with the plastic bag for my paint here. I'm using a beautiful green called Myrtle from Pureco if you're wanting to know what color that is. I absolutely love this. It's kind of like a real country green. It's in my house. I have a piece that I've done painted in this color myself, but it's just got a really warm feeling to it. I applied two coats of paint. Here you'll see I am applying the paint with a roller onto the door or the inside of the door. Even though I wasn't painting the inside of the cabinet, I do paint the back of the door. When you open the door, it does look a little bit funny if you've got the inside of your door not painted. I applied a second coat of paint onto the body of the piece as well with my paintbrush and roller doing the exact same thing. I decided with this piece that I wasn't going to mask up the top ledge. So you'll see that I did get a little bit of paint up onto the raw timber section. In order to fix this, I just, after I finish painting and have let my paint dry, go over and use my sander, including my orbital and my hand sander to just remove any excess paint that may have got onto the section that I'm wanting to leave exposed timber. I often get asked the question, how do I paint the inside of little nooks and crannies? And the easy answer is I just get down there and get into it and get it done. So you'll see here, I'm just hand painting inside of this section on this TV unit. In hard to reach areas, I use the brush and the roller as much as I possibly can like normal. I use the paintbrush to get right up close to the edge where the roller is not going to easily be able to reach and then use the roller to paint everything in between. Once you've painted up into hard to reach sections, it can be really helpful to actually get upside down and have a look at the piece from front, back 
and also from the upside down look to see whether there's any pieces that you have missed painting. It can actually be quite easy to miss an entire section when you're painting a hard to reach area. The next step in this piece was quite time consuming, but very therapeutic for me. When I started refinishing furniture, I initially did it as an activity, something that I could have for me that was a sense of enjoyment. I had my two children and I felt like I didn't really have anything for myself anymore. I'd always loved painting and I'd always loved being creative, but I didn't really have the right outlet to express this creativity. So when I discovered refinishing furniture, it was literally like a light just went off inside me. It was my new passion, my new joy. It then became my side hustle, which then turned into my business. And now I coach and teach other people how to refinish furniture as well. I'd love to have the opportunity to coach you and teach you all that I know about how to refinish furniture inside one of my two amazing memberships. I have a rookie membership, which is for beginners. And I also have a business membership where I coach people how to create a business refinishing furniture. If that might be something you're interested in, head to the description to get the links to learn a little bit more about my two memberships. Now I've got my sander out and I am going along the edge here where I did get some excess paint on to the ledge. Sorry for the awesome view you've got there. I started out using the orbital sander and then decided it was actually going to be easier with just a hand piece of sandpaper. So I grabbed out some sandpaper and then I started going along the entire ledge with the sandpaper to remove any excess that got onto the timber. Once I'd finished sanding, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any sanding dust on the piece when I was going to be applying my timber stain. I grabbed out a microfiber cloth and just went over the entire piece with the microfiber cloth just to remove any excess timber dust. I did the exact same thing with the picture frame on the drawers. I hand painted with a little paintbrush all of the inside of these drawers. However, I did get a little bit of paint onto the ledge when you're hand sanding, it is really hard to make sure it is 100% perfect. I just decided that I was going to use the sander to sand that off as well. Once I was 100% happy that the timber had no paint on it, I got the timber stain out and I started staining the entire piece. You'll see that I've already done the top of the cabinet, which looks absolutely amazing. I then needed to apply the timber stain to all of the timber on the picture frames for the drawers and the doors. I needed to do this with a little paintbrush going along and applying the timber stain. Then I would use a microfiber cloth to wipe off any excess. You need to do this reasonably quickly because you don't want to leave the timber stain and glaze on for too long. Otherwise it may leave those paintbrush strokes. You'll be able to see me do the same thing here. I'm applying that timber stain and glaze along on the timber. And then once I've applied it to a specific section, I'm then going to get the microfiber cloth out and wipe that without letting it get too dry as it can then also look a little bit patchy if I don't wipe off the excess quick enough. And I know there's gonna be a whole lot of people upset at me for working on the floor. It's just my personal preference. It just brings me back to nature. I like to get down low and work on the floor. I know it's not necessarily good for me. When the floor is cold, I do sit on a yoga mat, which stops the cold coming up from the floor. I would recommend you could get a bench or maybe another piece of furniture and then put a rag over it and paint any drawers or doors or any excess pieces that you've got that you can easily maneuver around up on a height to save your back. When I applied the paint to these sections, because I was working up against a painted piece, I kept a bottle of water on hand and I just put some water onto a different rag and wiped off any stain that got onto the piece where it shouldn't be on the painted section. I then did my usual version of overprotection. The stain and glaze that I was using did actually have a bit of a built-in top coat. However, I usually like to apply two, sometimes three, sometimes even up to five coats of another top coat over the top of the timber for added protection. I use a polycrylic in this instance. I'm just using a clear satin polycrylic as I didn't want to add a gloss to the finish. You can choose to have a matte finish, a satin finish or a gloss finish really depending on what 
feel you want for the entire piece. Making sure to work quickly along the grain of the piece with a sponge so that you don't end up with a streaky appearance. I did the same thing for the timber on the picture frames. I used my sponge and just gently applied the top coat to those timber sections, making sure I had not too much on the sponge that was then going to push the top coat into the painted section. I really just wanted a nice thin layer. Once I finished that, it was time to make it look beautiful and start putting it back together again. I grabbed my drill out and I put the hinges back on the door, applying the doors back to the piece to get the nice overall feel of how it's going to turn out. If you don't have a drill, this can also easily be done with a screwdriver. You're just applying the screws back into the original holes and reapplying the doors onto the unit. I use snap off screws when applying my new hardware because it's just so simple. These combination pliers are the easiest things. You just get the screw where you want it and then snap off to the length that's going to work for your drawers. Then you're just going to use the new hardware, apply the screw and just screw that on nice and simple. Often new hardware just takes it to the next level when you're refinishing your furniture. I just use a screwdriver here to tighten up that new hardware on the back. Then comes the exciting part, putting it all back together again. It's super exciting to see it all come together. Here she is, the end result. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you've got any questions about the process, be sure to ask them. My mission is to teach as many people as possible how to refinish furniture. Thanks for watching.